So good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Valorize Bio-Waste bio Valorization Pathways from uh, EU-Funded Projects. I'm Giulio Poggeroni from uh, ETA Florence. I'm involved in the bin to bin project. And uh, this webinar is a joint initiative by bin to bin Phoenix and Biosolutions projects, which have joined forces to uh, start to develop some joint initiatives in the field of bio waste, bio waste valorization. So as you saw from the agenda, the, um, the presentation today will uh, follow in a row. We will have uh, Sara Dagnotti presenting uh, the bin to bin approach. Sara is from uh, Consortio Ital Biotech. Then we will have Miriam Romero from Invenium, who will present Phoenix. And then Belen Miranda, who will uh, uh, present Biosolutions on behalf of SAV. So uh, just before starting, a few housekeeping uh, rules. You can use the uh, QNR uh, uh, tool to uh, post your questions because at the end of the presentation, so uh, in the space of 30 minutes, let's say, we will open the Q&A session and you will be able to post uh, your questions in, using the Q&A tool. Uh, we will, the chat, we will use the chat just to share links uh, and, uh, and information about the, the webinar and future activities. So uh, without further ado, I will give you a very brief introduction on the, what is bio-waste because we thought that it's important to uh, start from, uh, from the same page so that we don't have to uh, repeat certain, uh, certain concepts and certain aspects. So uh, what is bio-waste? According to the European framework, Waste Framework Directive that dates back to 2018, bio-waste is composed of two uh, main elements, food and kitchen waste and green waste. So food and kitchen waste, of course, is the uh, food scraps uh, like vegetables, fruit, fruit peelings and other organic residues that are usually produced by restaurants, canteens, retailers and in our uh, in our households, in every our everyday life. And then the second uh, uh, part of bio waste is the green waste. So the uh, grass cutting, falling leaves. Uh, hedge and shrub trimmings and all this kind of stuff that uh, are derived from the maintenance and handling of uh, green areas. Still, according the, to the to the directive, uh, bio waste does not include uh, forestry and agricultural residues, manure, sewage sludge, and other uh, biodegradable waste. So this is the first uh, uh, thing we want to point out. Uh, then. One uh, big concern uh, that we keep on repeating is that bio waste uh, is a precious resource and sadly there is too much waste of bio waste because we know from uh, the available data that uh, uh, around 68% of the bio waste generated in Europe ends up in the residual waste bin. And usually the waste in the residual waste bin tend to end up in three uh, different destinations. So landfill, which we know is uh, it's very bad. Uh, it's at the bottom of the uh, pyramid uh, that we will see in a, in a while. It can end to incineration, where energy production is involved, but there are still uh, some emissions involved. And then according to the uh, uh, hierarchy pyramid that we will see in a while, energy production is not a priority uh, over recycling. Uh, and then you have uh, different ways of uh, mechanical uh, biotreatment. And uh, um, now getting to the to the uh, pyramid I was mentioning before. We know that uh, the, at the European level, the first thing to do is to avoid waste, so prevention. Uh, we know that there is a lot uh, of uh, uh, bio waste being, uh, of food waste being produced. And so the first thing to do is to avoid this. Then you have the reuse. For example, uh, food uh, uh, which is still uh, not waste, but it's uh, 
given away from the uh, restaurants or from the supermarket can be reused, especially by food banks, uh, by charity organization. This is uh, uh, what we can label as reuse. And then once we have the so-called inevitable, inevitable bio waste, we end up in the uh, sorry, we end up in the uh, recycling phase. So inevitable bio waste is uh, uh, what cannot be avoided. For instance, once you eat the banana, the the skin of the banana, of course, is uh, inevitable bio waste. And then this inevitable bio waste should be uh, separated at source, or uh, separately uh, collect, collected via uh, door-to-door systems or uh, bins located in the in the streets. And then uh, after this, you have different valorization pathways, which are uh, what we will uh, we will discuss today. Because the three projects uh, available uh, and present today will present you uh, different valorization pathways that are uh, being implemented or being developed in different uh, countries and different cities in Europe. Uh, just to remember, this is very important because the the directive I was mentioning before has mandated that uh, by the end of last year, uh, European member states have to uh, to implement the separate uh, the, the, the separated collection of bio waste. So it's a mandatory thing now in Europe. Of course, we know that directives take time to being transposed into national uh, legislation, but it is a reality now. Uh, one last comment is about uh, the Roots Group because uh, uh, some of our organizations involved in the three project were uh, in the past involved in uh, Horizon 2020 project that already worked on the uh, valorization of bioways and how policy could uh, meet these new uh, opportunities arising from technologies and valorization pathways being developed. So in a way, this webinar wants to be uh, the next uh, the next step of this group that uh, released this paper that I will put you uh, in the chat, the link, so you, you will be able to download. And hopefully we will bring forward this work in a future uh, policy paper by these three projects that are present today. So uh, without further ado, I can uh, move to uh, the first speaker today, which is uh, uh, Sara. Sara is uh, uh, from um, Bean to Bean, and she will introduce uh, the project and the uh, valorization pathway. So, uh, Sara, the floor is yours. And you can remove the mute. I find it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, is, we do. Uh, so myself in the screen. Uh, so let me share my slide in presentation mode. I reduce myself and then be on the slide. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much, um, Julia, for this uh, um, introduction. Uh, as you already mentioned, uh, I, I'm going to present very briefly myself. I'm Sara Dagnotti. I'm the um, I work in Costarci Talbietec as a head of bioeconomy project management unit. And uh, I'm also the project coordinator on bean to bean So today, I'm really glad to present our project, uh, focusing on the concrete outputs that uh, uh, we would like to develop uh, within installation. Uh, forward. Okay. Um, so about uh, uh, the project, uh, you will see when the other projects uh, will present uh, their uh, their approach that ours is a little bit different from its sibling as uh, we do not focus directly on implementing one or a few technologies for bio waste valorization, but uh, we try to propose a wider approach to help um, European cities in their transition towards LP soils. In particular, what, uh, our approach aims to support innovative and economically viable value chains that can optimize bio waste recycling into soil improvers. In particular, uh, we focus on uh, urban bioways. So, the bioways that you produce at home, uh, bioways that are produced uh, from supermarkets, uh, from restaurants, and also on green ways that are produced, um, for example, uh, by trimming um, um, green green areas in your uh, in your cities. And uh, um, with this idea, we want to establish these circular two-way loops. 
um, with the with food product between food production and healthy soils. So not only uh, healthy soil uh, help uh, uh, improve food production, but um, by valorizing food waste that come from food production, uh, we um, we can indeed benefit the uh, the soil. It's moving, okay. <laughs> so, uh, two words about who we are. I've been to be being implemented this interdisciplinary approach that involves 11 partners from seven countries in Europe. And you can see circled here um, our free living labs that I will present later in detail. So, um, a little bit uh, about uh, more about the uh, bean to bean approach. Um, our project um, aims to help to solve the more impelling issues of waste production and recycling. And in particular, we acknowledge that uh, there are already a lot of solutions in our cities for recycle and valorization, but uh, this solution usually, or a lot of the time, um, are hindered uh, by several limitations that could be at the level of uh, collection, could be uh, Related to legislation, uh, really a lot of uh, um, a lot of challenges. So, uh, what the uh, project would like to do is to uh, valorize the existing local initiatives and solutions instead of proposing new ones, uh, while addressing local needs and challenges in order to remove these uh, limitation to their development. Uh, in particular, to uh, reach its, its objectives, uh, the bean to bean concept starts with uh, indeed mapping local needs, uh, local limitation, and especially uh, the, the already existing uh, solutions that uh, are already available in, in, um, in a city. Um, for uh, once identifying this solution, uh, are assessed uh, for their safety, environmental, and socioeconomic performances through uh, uh, the co-creation of a tailored evaluation framework, which will be then used to select the most promising solution to be boosted economically. And finally, um, after this uh, selection, uh, the, the, we will develop uh, these local and personalized business models uh, for, uh, um, to, to boost commercialization of, of the solution. Uh, the model will be tested in uh, free cities, our free living labs, uh, bring into the selection and development of different uh, uh, local solutions. Besides this, the development of the solution itself, we uh, also aim to uh, create uh, concrete tools for the cities uh, to replicate our approach and uh, um, be able to move forward their own solutions uh, towards commercialization. So some more details about our uh, uh, outputs, our concrete results for the city. Uh, first of all, uh, we will have this toolbox with roadmap and guidelines. It will be aimed to cities, municipalities, waste managers, and the aim is really to guide cities toward replicating our approach. So um, we uh, will have this roadmap uh, guiding uh, um, the cities uh, towards using uh, our uh, guidelines, uh, our tools uh, that will focus on uh, um, bio waste collection, but also safe and sustainable production and use of soil improvers. And we'll also give uh, uh, suggestions uh, uh, on how to maximize the market uptake and the economic viability of uh, uh, the, the solution. Another uh, important and interesting output will be this uh, application for uh, end users to select the best soil improvers. In particular, we aim to update an already existing platform that is access accessible uh, by farmers, which is called uh, FarmApps, as you can see here, um, uh, where um, end user will be able to provide information on their soil and soil improvers. And the app will, will uh, uh, then provide um, some information on the effects uh, on soil health so that the end user uh, can um, expect when using that particular soil improvers. Uh, we expect to have um, maximum free soil improver per, per living labs in these, um, in these uh, maps uh, so that uh, it could uh, grant a benefit for, uh, for the farmers and end users in, in general. Um, finally, at the core of the bean-to-bean -bean approach lies this uh, uh, scoring system. 
uh, that will be developed as a decision-making tool for cities and policymakers uh, with the aim of guiding their decision towards uh, uh, which innovation and which solution are worth funding or investing on. Uh, the tool in particular will allow computing the overall performances of uh, uh, this solution uh, by taking into account uh, um, different type of indicator from the safety, or including environmental, but also uh, considering uh, uh, socioeconomic viability and the local context. Uh, this is a slide uh, to have a closer look on the evaluation part, uh, just to uh, mention the, the four type of criteria that we would like to consider in our evaluation. Um, as I mentioned, our approach will be tested on free living labs that are part of our participatory approach. Uh, these living labs represent different pedoclimatic regions, but also are differently advanced uh, on the topic of bio waste. For example, we have the northern central cities, uh, Amsterdam and Hamburg, that are more advanced of, on the topic, and they will uh, particularly focus on improving the quality of their bio waste, which uh, directly affects the quality of uh, um, the, the, bio, the, the soil improver results in, resulting from their valorization. Uh, while we have Egalio in Greece, that it is more at a transitionary stage uh, with regards to bio waste management because of different knowledge gaps uh, in the, uh, in the poli in, for the policymakers, but also in, in, the, in the citizens. So what uh, they would like to achieve within the project is to uh, put in place an effective bio waste collection and demonstrate different strategies for composting to restore green urban areas. A very last slide from a presentation. Uh, this is one of the uh, concrete uh, uh, output and uh, tools that will be part of our toolbox for cities. Uh, we developed in this, the, this uh, handbook of recommendation and good practices uh, that establishes uh, the status quo of existing knowledge, approaches, solution uh, along the entire value chain for, for bio waste valorization. Um, so uh, this uh, handbook uh, in, will include the good practices, results, concrete examples from cities that come from uh, publication, uh, cities interview, consumers interviews, and interviews with uh, directly with solution provider. Uh, the, uh, as a result, this handbook uh, will identify the main step to ensure the effectiveness of bio waste to soil recycling system. Um, and it's based on this uh, iterative and participatory approach. Uh, it's not yet published, but will be published very soon. So stay tuned to, to know more and to read our um, um, our end book. Uh, these are my content details if you want to know more, and there is also our website if you want to have a look of what we are doing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sara. Uh, so just to mention in the chat, I've put the links to the three project website and to the roots paper I was mentioning in the introduction. Uh, then it's time for uh, the next presentation by Miriam Romero from Invenium Group. Yeah. Yes, we see you, Miriam. Perfect. So thank you very much for the introduction. Also, thank you, Sarah, for the presentation of, uh, of your project. Um, I'm here. My name is Miriam Romero from Invenium Group. We are the work package leader of the project Phoenix. Uh, Phoenix, as you will see, it's quite different from uh, Bio Solutions and so from bin to bin. Uh, it has a completely different scope, but really uh, targeting to the same, almost the same objectives. So let me see. Okay. So disclaimer, sorry. Um, just a sh very short introduction or presentation of the team that confirms uh, Phoenix. Um, Phoenix is, uh, is well, has nine partners around Europe, mainly from Spain, uh, whose coordinator is Universidad de Granada, uh, France, Greece, and also Denmark with the Institute. 
and uh, we have a it's 50 months duration and we are more or less in reaching almost 18 of the project so almost uh, one third so um julie already introduced very well this part and um, so we have a problem with <coughs> sorry bio waste and the EU targets to revalorize bio waste on uh, on 65 percent but uh, two years ago the the value was only 34 percent in europe so what means that we have still a lot of challenges and a lot of things to do. So the current options are for energy purpose that as we saw in the in the in the pyramid, it's one of the least options. And also we have composting, but also composting uh, has some challenges that maybe we need to find out also other solutions. So in, in FedEx, we focus on two types of bio-waste. Um, we differentiate them between non-fermentable, for us it would be um, to obtain biochar, and the fermentable ones that will be to obtain digestate. So uh, Project FedEx starts with, um, let's say, a starting value on where the biochar so far is so as a really promising solution that enhance uh, soil water holding capacity, nutrient uptake, and, and soil fertility. It stimulates microbial activity. It also acts as a carbon sink, so why to not use it broadly? Because mainly the agronomic benefits remain still untested. So it means that we don't know if uh, on the future we will have benefits or even we, will, we can even uh, reverse the situation and make it even worse. On the other side, the digital states, are a really promising solution also to uh, to make that, that these biomethane plants can be more profitable and also to, to take advantage of uh, this bio waste recycling, not only to generate energy, um, but so far, as said, so uh, for the majority of anaerobic digestion plants, this is a cause for disposal. So it's considered against a waste that it's uh, at this um, time it's considered or it's sent to landfill, what's, it's worsening the situation. And also it has a lot of uh, difficulties to find uh, heterogeneity on the feedstock. So it's also a big challenge that uh, we need to face in order to, to uh, make or further use of, of digital state. So what uh, Phoenix aims? So we aim to contribute to the recovery of undoing poor soils for agriculture to increase the quality and water reduction capacity. Uh, and also contributed to the climate change. But how we're going to do that? So as Julia presented at the beginning, uh, considering the uh, bio waste description from the European Commission, we choose the green waste from the cities. So it means that uh, the pruning residues um, from, from the cities, uh, mainly we have two types from winter and from summer. Uh, pruning, and then that will be the part of a non-fermentable uh, waste to obtain biochar through the pyrolysis, and then the supermarket uh, bio waste, and that we send to the anaerobic digestion, and we obtain the digestate. Then the main focus of Phoenix is to find a formulation that really uh, impacts on soil. So it means that uh, can recover the soil fertility and can recover also the the soil health. So step by step, what we're going to do. So we're going to produce biochar at lab scale uh, using these different kind of uh, green waste that we, we mentioned before. And um, so produce them in order to find uh, the characteristic desired for soil application. So then after producing 36 types of biochar combining different uh, production uh, parameters, we select the four, the four best ones uh, targeted assets for the soil application and improvement. Then we mix them with uh, with the digital states that also will be uh, characterized in order to make sure that we do not uh, miss it. And then we will um, test them. So this mixture in different doses also to see uh, if it's better, maybe more biochar or more digital states. Uh, so the it's effective on soil. And for that, we will use real soil, so not only bot testing. That it will be, we will have uh, three fields located in Spain, one in France, and another in Greece. So to also test different uh, soil conditions and soil use. And what's more, we will also characterize the gaseous emission and organic nitrogen mineralization 
potentials of this soil improver that we will develop, and we will do a computer simulation uh, that will also serve as decision making tool. So means that we can have any kind of uh, soil, for example, so or the user can introduce the, the characteristic of their soil and they can choose what is the best doses or what is the best biochar that they need to, to use for their soil so to obtain the, the desired results. And also on the other side, uh, we're going to test the biochar as an additive to an end the microbi microbiological activity in the nervous digestion. So we have seen, and there is a lot of um, literature regarding the, the synergies that there are between the, the paralysis, so the, the biochar, and uh, the, the nervous digestion. So we will also have a, a small line of, of research on this, on this aspect. So what will be um, the outcomes of the project and what maybe the audience that is here today can, can take off. So I said one of our main objectives and we want to, to impact this on, on new and improved demonstrated products. So in this case will be um, a soil amendment um, and then to create also a new value chain and services available. So first, I said we want to develop an alternative soil improver so getting out of the chemical products that are currently available in the market and are mainly used and to demonstrate the benefits of using, uh, let's say, natural products or uh, products out of bio waste. Also to improve and demonstrate uh, the process efficiency. So we, of course, uh, the paralysis technologies and also the anaerobic digestion technology to face some challenges. So we want to, um, to overcome these challenges, uh, proving the economic viability of, of doing that. And I was saying before, also create new value chains. So um, let's say that the energy uh, generation and the agronomic or the agronomic uh, sector were before quite unconnected. So now it's to, to link the bio waste generation, so to create a complete new uh, uh, value chain. On the other hand, uh, we also have to improve the environmental uh, health of, uh, of, of, yeah, of, of soils and also about soil improvers um, on whatever is related to production operation, also including the testing methods uh, to uh, to improve their, their life cycle or to prove that their life cycle is not worse than maybe their the commercial competitors. So as I said before, so we want to improve the soil quality. This is through the what well, we have some more technical words here, uh, but in, in different aspects. Uh, that's why we will uh, test our product in, in four di uh, five different fields. We also want to demonstrate the ability to avoid and even sequestrate greenhouse emissions. So this will could be really relevant for um, for agricultures, uh, as there is a new uh, way of generating money. Let's say uh, sequestrating uh, emissions uh, with carbon credits, and this is uh, something that we will investigate also in the project on how this can be demonstrated and how the product can demonstrate that it can uh, sequester carbon and and mitigate the climate change. So it can be also an option for agricultures. Um, as we mentioned before, also to develop this long-term effect simulation tool. So we don't, don't only want to, so as you may know, uh, it's quite difficult to prove the long-term effect on, on carbon uh, sequestration. So that's why we will take the, the results from the project from the different field testing and put them in a, in a model uh, to obtain the long-term effect. So as I said before, that one of the challenges of the biochar was that we don't know the effects on the long term. So in the project, we will uh, make sure or at least simulate that on the long term, we don't have a negative effect so that we should um, avoid using this product. And also, um, importantly, the regulatory roadmap. So um, it's uh, worthless to be working on a soil amendment that aims to um, and, and avoid the uh, line erosion. But if we are missing or totally the regulatory um, in, in place. So for this, we will, from the really beginning, so from the design phase, we are uh, making sure that all these uh, policies are accomplished and, and 
if in the future we see that there is a blocking points also to make recommendations so uh, to avoid that the uptake or the the use in the future of these kind of products uh, can be widely uh, extended. And I think this is the last point. So we want also to improve the nutrient recovery from bio waste. That this is one of the main uh, targets of of the of the project. So improve bio waste recycling uh, of this kind of waste that is sent to landfill currently, um, and to have a more profitable value chain. And then the recovery of this bio waste uh, through the more known NPK uh, nutrients. So this is through the, the, the digestates and also uh, increase the anaerobic digestion of pyrolysis processes economic viability. So as said before, so increasing um, the valorization or by valorizing all the byproducts by these technologies uh, makes that also the viability of these kind of technologies is also increased and we can at the end ensure uh, that bio waste can be valorized effectively. And last one, improvement of the digestate stability and ability to retain water, because one of the main uh, drawbacks of digestate is that they are quite unstable. It's very difficult to um, to transport them. Uh, you, usually, they can only be used uh, really locally, and, and in mixing them with biochar, we expect that we can also improve that, and they can be uh, transported uh, further uh, instead of being utilized only on the on the local farms, for example. Ah, sorry, I missed the last one. And and then the entrepreneurship on regeneration, sorry, <laughs> regenerative processes, uh, creating a spin-off company or a joint venture between uh, this value chain that we are representing in the in the project through this business uh, Phoenix business platform. This is something that we are still working on it, defining, and most probably will be available by the end of the project. And um, as I said before as well, I don't want to repeat, also to look for the synergy between uh, the best way of recovering in, uh, waste and, uh, and fermentable bio waste as supermarket waste through the anaerobic digestion and pyrolysis um, for the production not only of energy, but also of uh, soil improvers. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Miriam, for the nice presentation. So uh, in the meantime, um, I would just want to mention that the recording of this webinar and the slides will be available after, uh, of course, the, the end of this session on the project website. So you will find then in the news section, the recording and the presentations to download, especially for those who have connected after the start. So I'm now giving the floor to Belen for the presentation of BioSolutions. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Julio. I am going to share my presentation. And before of that, uh, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Uh, to all the audience for attending the, the webinar. I hope it is going to be helpful and you find it interesting. And um, thank you all to the our uh, project sisters, uh, being to be and Phoenix for collaborate and and develop this this webinar. So uh, okay. Um, This is my presentation. You can see the full yes. screen. Okay, yes. perfect. Perfect. Uh, the the Biosolutions project, uh, this is the, the complete uh, name is transforming bio waste into safe and effective, effective soil improvers. And um, firstly, just uh, to put in context the, the project as a, a brief um, Introductions. Uh, I would like to say that soils are, as uh, you already know, um, are finite natural resources with critical socioeconomic and ecological functions, uh, including uh, food production, biodiversity conservation, and regulation of water supplies. Today, 60, uh, between 60 and 70 percent of soils are degraded across the European Union. 
due to unsustainable soil exploitation and the disproportionate use of synthetic chemicals. So, uh, in addition, soil degradation is expected to increase in the coming years because of climate change, increased land use and unsustainable practices linked to human population growth, resulting in direct negative consequences on the food supply chain, environment, biodiversity and human health. So, uh, uh, with this context, uh, as uh, we will see an overview of what soil improvers are, these are inputs added to soil in situ, whose main function is to maintain or improve its physical, chemical and or biological properties. So today, soil uh, productivity is high dependent on soil improvers as their application enhances key plant production parameters no longer provided by degraded soils, such as carbon availability, nutrient uh, by bioavailability, moisture retention, or aeration. So uh, many of the soil products applied today to, maximi to maximize agricultural production, such as fertilizer or herbicides, contain synthetic chemicals, like uh, solvents, hydrocarbons, heavy metals, and so on, that actively contribute to long-term soil degradation via acidification, uh, salinization, or toxicity. In addition to soil degradation, synthetic chemicals are responsible for a wide spectrum of, of uh, uh, environmental and health risk uh, and are highly energy uh, consuming. So uh, we have to take into account as well that the 16th of July 22, the new fertilizing product regulation entered into form with the aim to produce, to, to reduce uh, synthetic uh, product use and provide more restrictive uh, CE marking requirements. So the new regulation um, introduced more strained uh, rules related to quality, safety and labeling of fertilizing products. All of, that, all of that we have to take into, into account. So, how uh, we can fight to, against soil degradation? Well, in Biosolutions uh, project, we try to valorize it uh, through uh, different uh, pathways. Mm, the point is uh, that the agri-food production system is facing the urgent need of finding, uh, finding sustainable alternatives to synthetic chemicals to ensure soil recovery while avoiding environmental and human health uh, risks. So uh, the, main, uh, the main objective of solution project is the implementation of innovative and effective fertilizers produced from organic waste that fosters <clears throat> the recovery of soil uh, quality and fertility through the reduction of the use of the use of chemical fertilizer, as well as the circular economy by reduce organic waste that is incinerated or sent to landfill. Everything will be done in a co-creation process where the development of the circular economy and the entrepreneurial system participation will be essential parts. In order to achieve the objectives, we rely on uh, coordinators um, and partners from previous key European projects, as, such as uh, WasteTap, Value Waste, and Scalibur, as basis in the in the consortium in our consortium. You can see here in this slide the the consortium. Uh, we are eleven partners and one affiliated entity, and uh, between. Uh, the, the partners of the, of the consortium, uh, we are four coordinators and partners from the main European projects, all of them regarding, regarding uh, bio waste. The, the project uh, will last four years. Uh, here you can see a picture of our first meeting in September 23. And uh, 
In the project, we are going to develop uh, four valorization paths. Um, Biosolution approach aims to, to scale up this uh, for uh, bio waste valorization uh, routes originating from uh, key previous, uh, previous European projects. This, uh, these uh, four valorization paths are from insect trust, blood hydrolysate, and struvit and K struvit to produce new uh, fertilizers that we will see in depth in the, in the following slides. You can see a, a scheme of the valorization routes and uh, we will see later all in depth. Well, um, following, following the previous uh, research activities from the waste up and value waste uh, projects, biosolutions englobes the development and scale up of uh, valorization routes to obtain efficient market ready bio waste soil improvers as an alternative to synthetic products and the landfill incineration, the uh, landfill or incineration of the, the bio waste. So uh, the four um, uh, valorization uh, routes are the first one is a um, blood hydrolysate, uh, which is following the, the research activities of waste tag uh, project. Uh, the, the optimization uh, done uh, at that project was um, was uh, 400 liter per week enzymatic hydrolysis. In biosolutions, uh, we will develop new blood uh, hydrolysate to soil improvers with high uh, iron and nitrogen contents and 80% L-amino acid recovery for directed soils uptake. In this picture, you can see the, the whole uh, bioprocess of the blood hydrolysate. Uh, the first step is the enzymatic hydrolysis, then the liquid, we get a liquid blood hydrolysate. Uh, then we, we will do the drying process, and the, at the end, the dry, we get the dry uh, blood hydrolysate. The second, the second valorization route is uh, following key findings from uh, value waste and to optimize pilot scale frost production, 15 kilos uh, per hour, to obtain a product with a well-known composition. Um, uh, this is a key soil beneficial components as a chitin, organic matter, growth promoting organisms, and NPK. Uh, will be concentrated and potential contaminants or non-beneficial components will be separated from, from FRAS. And finally, a pelletization process will facilitate logistics and application in soils. Well, the, the, third, valor, the third valorization route is um, following the value waste uh, project uh, as well. And struvit from um, bio waste is a, poly, a potential soil improving, improver rich in phosphorus and to obtain uh, through anaerobic digestion of different bio waste. Struvit will be produced at uh, one um, meter cubic per, per hour. And the, the fourth, the last one, is key struvit from food processing wastewater. In this uh, process, follow up uh, value waste project research activities and aerobic treatment and reverse osmosis of food processing water uh, from potato processing will be optimized uh, in a pilot uh, scale. You can see the, the whole process on the pizza as well. And after the reverse osmosis, we can get the key struvit with uh, very rich in and potassium uh, nutrients. Well, uh, the, the validation, the, the, the validation are um, 
different combination uh, of the all of these valorization routes. Uh, we will do at least uh, 10 formulations that will be validated in these uh, four uh, ways to, to validate. In at laboratory, laboratory level, uh, effective organic uh, carbon uh, will be or is going uh, to be analyzed to estimate the mineralization of organic matter in soils. Then at the microcosm uh, level, uh, growth parameters such as height, number of leaves, aerial and root uh, biomass, and the effective availability of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium for plant update will be measured in order to assess uh, soil mineralization uh, dynamics. Then at uh, greenhouse crop phosphorus dynamics to assess nutrient use efficiency or um, phosphorus. And uh, at the field pilots, uh, we will measure and validate crop uh, nitrogen balance to estimate potential nitrogen supplies and HEG exchange to evaluate environmental uh, impact. And finally, at least five formulations will be tested in the living labs uh, valid val um, validations uh, with the with the uh, end users. These are the three living labs that uh, is uh, developed in the in the project. There are three places: uh, Flanders, Valencia, and and Murcia. <clears throat> and in these uh, living labs. The activity of co-creation and co-validation of the development of the soils improving uh, are going to involve all the stakeholders to the entire value chain to get uh, the best uh, biofertilization. And the, the point is that the, the Valencia Living Lab is going to too much with the European Green Capital of the city of Valencia that was selected in, in 2024, this year. So uh, the results and the data, at least five fertilizers at the end of the project, validated data obtained from the optimization of the process from the valorization paths, and we will do the economic analysis from every processes to get at minimum five uh, market ready bioweight soil improvers. So to sum up the concept of a solution project uh, aims to accelerate the placing on the market of biofertilizers obtaining from the valorization of organic waste in order to reduce the use of chemical fertilizers promote sustainable soil recovery and improve the circularity of the entire system. You can see at the pits are the four pillars of the, of the project. The design and the validation of the project, the circular business models creation, market awareness, and key stakeholder engagement. And that's all from, from my part. Thank you very much, Thank Belen. <laughs> Uh, so now we are heading to the last part of uh, Q&A. So in the meantime that our attendees uh, gather their thoughts in order to post a question, I, I would like to, to make, uh, to post you a single and short question. So I would ask you to uh, answer quickly. Uh, regarding policy, in your experience, not, not necessarily linked to, the, to this project, uh, to, you, to your project that you are presenting today, what were the um, the main regulatory constraints that you saw uh, as the most relevant that hindered the uh, implementation of uh, bio waste valorization pathways? Maybe we can start from uh, Sarah to. Uh... Okay. Thank you, Julia, for this very interesting question. Uh, in my opinion, uh, what we have seen um, since the beginning of the project is that uh, 
uh, we are dealing with um, a policy framework that uh, uh, needs to balance the recycle and valorization with safety um, and quality. So we have uh, uh, quality standards that uh, uh, usually for uh, soil improvers that usually fall uh, under the fertilization uh, uh, rules and regulations um, that uh, create, uh, uh, that are um, useful for safety, but sometimes hinder the development of new technologies because it adds a lot of administrative burden. So this is a, an issue. And another issue that we saw is that uh, policy, uh, policy and the political tools on this topic are extremely va variable among uh, uh, Europe, but among also different regions and even in uh, different cities. So uh, it's uh, really dif di uh, difficult to uh, transfer solution, for example, but also to produce a soil improver in a city and say, okay, I will sell this uh, uh, soil improver in another city because maybe in another city you cannot use it. Uh, so this is why also it's, for uh, in our opinion, is very important to develop local solution and the work uh, uh, with and, on, and not against uh, the local context. I hope I answered the question in a short way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Miriam Dembelan. Yeah, from our point of view also, one of the main uh, challenges or issues are to really adapt the processes that we have. Um, so to the so the, the expectations of the value chain, let's say, uh, to really apply and valorize the bio waste. Because sometimes we find that, uh, for example, in aerobic digestion or pyrolysis, uh, we cannot valorize or we cannot apply the products as they are, and they need a lot of uh, intermediate process uh, because maybe the regulation is not adapted to to them. So uh, they are written for chemical fertilizers that are produced in another way. And this is uh, hindering, let's say, the potential of the bio waste application in in agronomic uh, in the agronomic sector. So I think this is one of the main challenges, uh, and also uh, yeah, the, the the whole the products need to be prepared in order to be used. And as Sarah says, so uh, it can be okay in one country, but then when you come to the to the neighbor, uh, it doesn't work anymore. So you need to recheck from the beginning and check. Um, country by country and even uh, locally uh, or regionally uh, how the, the policies looks in order to really uh, valorize this, this value waste. Thank you. Belen, uh, one uh, thought on this? Uh, yes, in in our case, uh, as, as Sarah said before, in at the beginning of the of the project, uh, we we had to to, to prepare or to, to join all the information related with, with policy regulations and uh, to identify the abundant uh, regulations for each of the valorization, valorization paths. Uh, this is, uh, I think that this is a very, very big challenge to only to to identify the and to to work in the safety way in the uh, uh, correct way way uh, is um, a big a big challenge and in in our case uh, apart from the four uh, valorization paths uh, we are uh, working in the blend uh, some of the feedstock so the results are different as we plan uh, uh, in in previous projects. So we have to look for the updated regulations, and it's very, as I said before, very abundant at the all the the levels local, regional, national, European. You have to be very very updated to to work and no waste time. So it's challenge, I think. Thank you, Belen. So uh, in the Q&A section, there was one uh, that probably is directed to you, Belen, because it was done during the, your presentation. So what is crystallization after anaerobic digestion? Is is for, for me, Julia? Yeah, for you, you. Maybe Ellen, it was I think you're muted. 
Sorry, now yes. Yeah. Can you hear okay. me? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. Uh, well, uh, as uh, you asking me about the uh, crystallization. Yeah. Yes, this is the 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 final uh, step uh, in the end strobit from processing with water. And this okay. is uh, um, after the anaerobic digestion. Uh, the the following step is the crystallization of uh, about the product you get um, from the anaerobic digestion to get the end strobit. This is okay. the the last part of the bioprocess. Okay. Of that but... Okay. Then we have a very long question that probably it will take some time to to answer so what are the concerns regarding the economic viability and long-term sustainability of these practices is the long-term use of valorized biomass economically viable compared to synthetic fertilizer is it also able to deliver the necessary nutrients required to improve uh, crop yields as compared to the use of uh, synthetic fertilizer any research uh, results to back this up so who wants to start? I can answer if you want. Yeah. So of course, this is one of the main questions when we uh, were, let's say, designing the project, that uh, use of bio waste is sometimes not really backed up by results. So in this case is why, uh, of course, four years of project is too short, this is true, but it's why we are going to do pot testing and also field testing uh, to check that these uh, products are are really reliable and we can obtain similar or even better results than with the uh, with the synthetic uh, fertilizer. In our case, it's not a fertilizer itself; it's a soil improver. But well, we can also find soil improvers in the market. And uh, there is this tool that will be developed that will uh, take results from the soil testing and will be modeled in order to really. Uh, uh, test in the long term or model in the long term, simulate, let's say, uh, that uh, the expected result, the expected impact can be ensured uh, in years. So at the end, that, for example, including biochar in soil um, is not reversing the situation, meaning reversing, but uh, worsening the situation, but it improves and also maybe in, in the best case, it can uh, sink carbon. So we have a, a two-side uh, two, two solution. So not sure if I if I answer the question. Well, about the results to back it up, we expect that by the end of the project to be able to share uh, different papers uh, and publications. So to answer all this this question and mm -hmm. hopefully to be uh, providing to the to the market a, a new product that is better than than what we have mm -hmm. right now. Sure, because yeah, these projects are exactly addressing these topics, and in two years' time, when they have come to their conclusion, there will be certainly more results to back it up. I don't know if Sarah and Belen, you want to add something on this point? Yes, if I may, I will add a consideration about the economic part, maybe, about the economic viability. Um, if we look at, um, at the, the value chain of bio-waste valorization into soil improvers from a city point of view, uh, it is uh, sometimes it's not really viable from an economic point of view to manage waste because waste uh, are a huge burden. And um, uh, looking at the value chain as a linear value chain, um, yeah, usually it's not uh, it's not economically viable. And um, what we saw uh, also by studying different business models that are available on the market is that it is very important to uh, transition from the linear models to uh, the circular one. Uh, where you consider to uh, valorize all the outputs and side streams that come from the uh, the value chain. Also, uh, another important factor that we analyze, especially in the cities, um, could be the waste charging uh, system policies. So what we are doing is also studying how uh, these policies and waste charging fees can be implemented in cities to uh, support uh, uh, bio waste management. For sure, uh, bio waste uh, valorization uh, instead of fertilizers, require a very structured value chain. Uh, but we have, uh, we should have a lot of environmental, uh, but also organizational advantages that um, 
should somehow um, back up or, so, or, or the cost. And we hope uh, with our business models and business plan that are uh, part of our um, of our project concepts also to provide some uh, example of uh, how uh, this, uh, this value chain can be uh, economic, uh, economically viable. Thank you very much. Belen, you want to add something on this? Mm, well, uh, of, from my point of view, I agree with with them, and uh, only to add that uh, is uh, I agree with this very very important to analyze the economical point. You mu you're muted. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I sorry, yeah. sorry, but uh, taking into account that the, uh, there are a highly energy consuming to produce fertilizers. Uh, we know that 1.2% of the world's energy is used in fertilizer production. So we have a wide range to, to improve that figures. Mm. But uh, yeah. of course, it's important to, to, to take into account the economic analysis. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So we have come to the conclusion of our uh, webinar. I would like to thank you all for your uh, interesting insights and your nice presentations. To our attendees, I would like to remind that uh, uh, we will post soon the recording of the webinar and the presentations that you just saw. You will find them in the news sections of the three projects. I posted in the chat the links to our website and uh, they are all present on LinkedIn. So if you go through LinkedIn, you can always be updated on the uh, latest publications, latest activities, and also the follow-up of uh, this webinar. So thank you again to our, uh, all the participants, to our speakers, and uh, hope to see you soon in another joint initiatives of uh, Bean to Bean, Phoenix, and Bio Solutions. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Mm -hmm.